Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you Irene Dunn and William Powell in Love Affair. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. <laughs> Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. A chance meeting between the right people starts a good many things in this world. It may determine the fate of nations, make or lose a million dollars, or begin a romance. I'll let you guess which of these results from the chance meeting in the play called Love Affair. It's a drama that's both gay and serious at the same time. Gay because the parties to the romance are such good company. Serious because, well, because love is like that. The success of Love Affair on the screen put another feather in the cap of Leo McCary, who produced and directed it for RKO. And by this time, Leo's cap must look like an Indian war bonnet. In our production tonight, we have the same lovely star who played the part of Terry McKay in the picture, Irene Dunn. And Irene has left a memory of many fine performances in the Lux Radio Theater. The other half of Love Affair is William Powell, who will play the role of Michael Marnie. We heard that MGM cameras had captured Mr. Powell for a new picture beginning tomorrow. And that meant he'd be pretty busy for the next couple of months. So a week ago, we bearded Bill in the MGM lion's den and uh, put him to work with us. Behind the marquee lights which proudly announce these stars is your support of our product, Lux Toilet Soap. That's what keeps the lights aglow, just as Lux Toilet Soap helps millions of women keep the glow of beauty. Now the lights are up, our stars are ready to enter, and the curtain rises on Act One of Love Affair, starring William Powell as Michael Marnay and Irene Dunn as Terry McKay. <laughs> It's said of certain people that they have less privacy than a goldfish. But Michael Marnay of Paris must have gazed with envy at the placid goldfish bowl. For compared to him, the finny resident was a hermit. On a night not long ago, the radio gossipers burned up the airways from America to Singapore with the latest news of his unprivate existence. In Paris... The women of the world will be desolate at this report. Michael Marnay sails tonight for America to marry Lois Clark, American heiress to a fortune of 600 million francs. In New York. Michael Marnay, the French heart crusher, sailed incognito tonight from Naples on board the Napoli. Why? Because Lois Clark and her 20 million smackers will be waiting for him on the dock in New York City. And this time, it's married. In London. Uh, it is rumored that Michael Marnay sails from Medica tonight to enter into matrimony with one of America's uh, industrial nobility. Miss Lois Clark. Uh, I think that's all. On the steamship Napoli, the subject of all this excitement paces the deck slowly, reading a radiogram. Suddenly, a gust of wind takes it from his hand and whisks it around the corner of the deck. Monsieur Marnay gives chase and, rounding the corner, pulls up short as he sees a very pretty girl reading a radiogram. Oh, I'm so sorry, but uh, I think you're reading my radiogram. I beg your pardon. Oh, yes, the wind blew it here. My radiogram, I believe you're reading it. Oh, in just a moment. I, I want to finish. My. Well, uh, how do I know this is yours? Can you identify yourself? Well, I, I'm Michael Marnie. Don't tell me you're the fella. The one they've been talking about on the radio. I'm afraid I am. Well, can you tell me what this message says? It's frightfully personal, and I'd like to be sure that, uh, well, you know. I, well, it I says... Remembering a warm, beautiful night. A thunderstorm over Lake Como. And you. And you. That's you? Yes. It was all right, huh? Uh-huh. It was nice? Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, do you think it will ever take the place of baseball? I beg your pardon? Oh, never mind, no. Here's your radiogram, Mr. Marnay. Good evening. Oh, wait, wait, please. I, uh... I'm in trouble. Serious trouble. Well, I could have told you playing around like Como. The poor thing. I must talk to someone. Well, I'm not very good at that sort of thing. I talk a lot. I'm trying to break myself of the habit. I can but... see you have an honest face. 
Yes, I can trust you, can't I? Well, I guess so. Come with me. Uh, but the captain has an honest face, too. Shall we go to your cabin or mine? Well, mine. It's not that I'm prudish. It's just that my mother told me never to enter a strange room in months ending in R. Your mother must be a very beautiful woman. <laughs> Here it is. What's your name? Terry McKay, and I'm traveling alone. Was that by any chance what was troubling you? <laughs> Why, of course. How did you guess? Well, this is fine. You know, you saved my life. I've been bored to death. I haven't seen one attractive girl in this boat since we've left. Not one. Can you imagine nine days like that? Why, it's terrible. Life should be bright. It should be beautiful and bubbly like pink champagne. I got scared. I said to myself, don't beautiful women travel anymore? Evidently not. And then I saw you. Cigarette? No, thanks. Uh, have you been getting results with a line like that, or would I be surprised? Well, if you were surprised, it would surprise me. Well, that sounds like a nasty crack. I could make a few, too, if I felt like it. I'm sure you could. I know I can. That's what I said. I think I will. <laughs> How's your fiancé, Miss Lois Clark? She has a cold. Oh, too bad. Got it at Lake Como? No, she wasn't there. Then the lady of the lake No, is not... that was her best friend. Oh, hmm. Chummy bunch. You know, this boat's going awfully fast. Only eight and a half days till we get in. Is there any reason why, from now, it shouldn't be pink champagne? Well, um, do you like that picture on the table? Oh, uh, yeah. Friend of yours? A very good friend. I see. He's nice, huh? Very nice. He's all right, mm -hmm. huh? <laughs> Where is he now? <laughs> New York. He sends me on a buying trip every once in a while. You see, um, he's my boss, too. Oh, uh... You don't think he would approve of uh, pink champagne? No, no. I don't think so. I think it's very touching you and him, very beautiful. I like that. He must be very engaging. Well, you can just imagine how attractive he is when uh, I can resist so charming a person as you. <clears throat> Let's see. That's the door I came in. Well, I still have deck tennis, keno, and shuffleboard. Oh, don't tell me you're embarrassed. Yes, to my embarrassment. Well, if you don't mind, I'll take my pride for a walk. Unless by chance you'd care to have dinner with the two of us. <laughs> yes, I'd love to. And you mustn't believe all you've heard of me. Oh, I couldn't believe all, Mr. Marnay. But I gather that you've known quite a few women. Or maybe few is the wrong word. Uh, maybe. And I guess you haven't much respect for them. Maybe. But, of course, you've always been fair in your judgment. No, I've been more than fair. I idealize them. Every woman I meet, I put on a pedestal. But the longer I know her, the better I know her. Oh. And the better I know her... <laughs> well, let's talk about you. Oh, no, no. We'll talk about me another time. I think I'd like to take a walk on the deck. Of course. Yeah, boy. Oh, oh, Radio Grand, Signore Monet. Oh, another one? And your name, Signorina? McKay. Oh, there's one for you also. Here, Signorina. Oh, thank you. From New York? Mm-hmm. Uh, yours from New York, too? Mm-hmm. Well, now, uh, where were we? Oh, yes, yes. What's the name of that strange place you were born? Kansas. Ah, and from there, where did you go? Well, from there, I went to New York and got a job singing in a nightclub from 10 to 3 in the morning, and then the manager used to chase me around his office till about 4, and then I went home. And then one night, he came along. Oh, yes, the man in the picture. Mm -hmm. And he said I didn't belong in a place like that. He said, um, um... That you should improve yourself? Yes, so I studied hard. So that someday you would be a charming, lovely wife. Yes, that was more or less the idea, uh... Well, that sort of brings us up to date. <laughs> I beg your pardon. Uh, will you turn it this way, please? Who are you? Uh, the ship photographer. Uh, Grazia. Thank you very much. Oh, 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 that's bad. Uh, a picture of us together. I oh, uh, wait a minute. You, uh... I say that's a beautiful camera you have there. May I see it? Oh, yes, uh, signore. Takes nice, clear pictures, huh? Oh, very clear, yes. <laughs> signore, you took it to film up. Oh, does that spoil the picture? I'm so sorry. Give me my camera back. Here you are. Thank you, signore. Thank you very much. <laughs> I guess it's no good for either one of us to be seen together. Right or wrong, people talk. So it'd better be goodbye. What's the matter? Afraid? Of you? No. But after all, we're on the same ship. 
There's still eight days to go, you know. Well, you can take nice long walks in the sunshine. We'll be in Madeira tomorrow. The sun always shines in Madeira. What do I do if it rains? Oh, no. <laughs> now, it's no good. I see. It's particularly no good for you. Yes, that's right. Being seen with you is news, and I don't want to get my picture in the paper. So I guess we'd better uh, spread out. Good night. Good night. <laughs> Passengers will please be back on board at 5 o'clock. The boat will leave Madeira at 5 o'clock. Passengers will please be back on board. At Hello. Going ashore? Oh, no, yes. Yes, I'm calling on a lady this afternoon. Oh, even in Madeira? <laughs> You're wrong this time. It's my grandmother. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, that's all right. She lives way up on that hill. I'd like to come along and meet her. No photographers. Oh, I'd be happy to come. <laughs> This is her house. That's her little chapel over there. Way down the hill, you, you see those toy houses? Mm -hmm. That's the village. Oh, what a divine place. I want to meet her. I'll see if she's here. Oh, Mimi! Mimi! Uh, she must be in the chapel. What is there about this place? Something makes you feel you want to whisper. There's such peace here. It's like another world. Yes. Yeah. My grandmother's world. Uh, tell me a little more about her. Well, my grandfather was in the diplomatic service. This was his last post. He died here, so she stayed on to be near him. He's buried there beside the chapel. <laughs> she must be waiting, I think, a little impatiently. The day she'll join him. Michael. Michael, my dear. Mimi, darling. Why didn't you tell me you were arriving? Oh, Mimi, I wanted to surprise you. Oh. I am very surprised. So, you are going to be married, Michael. Is this the girl? Oh, no, no, darling. Uh, this is Miss Terry McKay. Oh, how do how you do? do? <laughs> she is very charming, Michael. I like her. Oh, thank you, I'm glad. If you'll excuse me, I'll sit down for a moment. Uh, I'm longer at my prayers nowadays, and my knees, well, they are as old as I am. Tell me. Are you English? No, no, I'm American. American? <laughs> Do you know, I have a special fondness for America. It was my husband's first post after we married. Really? Yes. In fact, we went to Washington on our honeymoon. Uh -huh. My husband was in the French embassy. Mr. Grover Cleveland was your president. We met him, a great, hearty man. He got married while he was in the White House, and we all went to the wedding. There was great excitement. I remember the lovely bride. I remember it caused a sensation. She did not wear a bottle. <laughs> oh, you have a lovely place here. Thank you. I could stay on forever. Oh, you are too young for that. It is a good place to sit and remember, but you still have to create your memories. Uh, I see you looking at my chapel. Would you like to go in? Oh, may I? But of course. Thank you. How long has it been for you, Michael? Mm, well, uh... Since you were an altar boy. <clears throat> then you better go in, too. It won't hurt you. I'll prepare tea. Come in, my dear. Tea will be ready in a moment. Where is Michael? He'll be right along. May I help you? Thank you, my dear. Where are your cups? Over there. I'm sorry I had to let my maid go. You see, I planned on dying when I was 75, but here I am 77. So if I'm not going to die, I should start saving my money. <laughs> oh, what a lovely painting. You like it? Yes, it's charming. Who did it? Michael. Michael? He painted it for me. But it's good. He is very talented. Unfortunately, he's also very critical. The artist in him would create, the critic destroy. As a result, he has not done anything since. Oh, what a pity. <laughs> Michael is too busy uh, living, as they call it. Things come easy to him, and he is always allured by the art he is not practicing. 
the places he has not been, the girl he has not met. Maybe I shouldn't have met him. No, 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 you are different. I don't mind confessing to you, my dear, that I have been worried about him. I am frightened sometimes. Why? Uh, that one day life will present a bill to Michael and that he will find it hard to pay. But when I see him with you, I feel better. Oh, I wish I could share your confidence. You will have it when you need it. There is nothing wrong with Michael that a good woman could not make right. Hello. Well, I'll have you two girls been getting along. Oh, you'd be surprised. Yes, wouldn't he? I'll bet Mimi did all the talking. Mm -hmm. <laughs> She's been telling me that when you were a little boy, if you didn't get your own way, you'd lie on the floor and kick and get red in the face. Oh, what did you say? Well, I said you didn't do that anymore. And now if you don't get your own way, you just get embarrassed. Oh, may I have some tea? She was a great pianist once. I think she's wonderful right now. She is. Not so loud, I can still hear you. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I'm afraid that's for us. I do not like boat whistles. Mimi, darling, I'll come back and see you soon, I promise. Please do. You're shivering. Don't you want your shawl around you? Thank you. My, it's a beautiful shawl. You like it? Indeed, I do. I will send it to you someday. Oh, uh, goodbye, Michael. Goodbye, darling. Goodbye, my dear. Goodbye. God bless you. Mind if I come in with you for a moment? Mm, if you like. Yeah, it's getting pretty windy on deck. Yes. Well, I just want to thank you for a grand evening. And I want to thank you for the loveliest day I've ever known. You were very sweet to my little grandmother. I'm going to write to her. Oh, that'll be nice. You know, I'm really very grateful to her. Well, you should be. I think perhaps she's made you see me in a more favorable light. She has. You're wondering, of course, why I'm not better. I am. I think you're all right. As far as you go? Well, that's as far as I can go. Terry. Feel how the boat's rocking. We must have changed our course. I think we have. But only for a while. Uh, good night. Terry, listen to me. No, don't. Don't. Uh, we're heading into a rough sea, Michael. Good night. Good night. Hello. Terry. Hello. If you say a penny for your thoughts, I'll jump overboard. What are you doing out here? Couldn't you sleep? No, too near New York to sleep. What about you? <laughs> All I seem to do is turn and toss. Dreaming? You couldn't call it dreaming. I'm awake. I'd call it wishing. <laughs> My father used to say, wishes are the dreams we dream when we're awake. He used to drink a lot. <laughs> you know, I wrote a song once about wishing... It was rather nice. Oh, it was. How does it go? Uh, oh, I forget, but uh, it's said that if you wish long enough in your mind, and if you wish strong enough in your heart, and if you keep on wishing long enough and strong enough... You get what you want for Christmas? <laughs> yes. Well, we'll get in in the morning in New York. Will he be waiting? Mm-hmm. I just had another radiogram. What about her? Hmm? I had one, too. Terry, I guess if we have something on our minds, we'd better say it now. Yes. You know, I've never worked in all my life. All my life, I've never worked. I've been thinking about that. Oh, uh, what did you say? Uh, I didn't say anything. Yes, you did, too. You said I was very fond of expensive things, furs and jewels and things. Or did I say that? Mm -hmm. I guess you and I have been more or less used to a life of pink champagne. It might be a little difficult to change. Do you like beer? Mm, yes, I do. I know, but... I know. My father used to say, it's a funny thing. The things you like best in life are either illegal, immoral, or fattening. <laughs> Your father? Yeah. 
I told you he drank like a fish. <laughs> I wonder what your father would think of me. Never working. Not one day. Well, just because you haven't... Oh, that doesn't, doesn't mean, mean that I couldn't. No, of course not. But I might not find out all at once. It might take the six months to find out if... If what? Well, it's hard to say. After all, it's unfair to ask you to take a chance. But, Terry, if I worked hard enough and long enough and wishes came true, where would you be? What are you trying to say, Michael? I'm trying to say that it would take me six months to find out if I'm worthy to say what's in my heart. Oh, that's just about the nicest. Oh, well, I, I think I'll turn in now and do a little more rolling and tossing. I'll think about it and let you know in the morning. Going my way? No, I think I'll walk a little. You know, marriage is a very serious thing. Uh, yes, I know. Do you like children? Yes. Yes, I do. So do I. Michael, Michael. Oh, oh, there you are. <laughs> I was afraid you left the boat without telling me. Oh, no, no, Michael, listen. If everything goes all right for both of us in six months, I mean, that's July. July, yes. Now, look, I've written out these directions. Read them carefully so there won't be any mistake. My dear darling... That's me? Uh-huh. Meet me on July 1st, 5 o'clock, 102nd floor, top of the Empire State Building. Yes. Now, there it is. See? Over there. It's the tallest building in the world. You can't miss that. It's the nearest thing to heaven we have in New York. No, oh, yes, darling. Be sure to take the elevator. <laughs> Just a moment, William Powell and Irene Dunn will return in Act Two of Love Affair. But now, what have we here? Am I seeing things, or have we six girls, uh, six very lovely girls, all standing in a row? We're not just six girls, Mr. Ruick. We stand for something. We're sort of symbols. Oh, symbols, I see. Well, is it all right for me to say you're certainly the best-looking symbols I've seen in a long time? <laughs> but suppose you tell our audience what your symbols are. Now, we'll take you one at a time. First, the uh, girl with the nice red hair. Tell us what this is all about. Well, you see, Mr. Ruick, we stand for six special qualities in Lux Toilet Soap. Well, well, well. Lux Toilet Soap is proud of you. You really are about the best-looking six girls I ever saw together in one small space. It's too bad, in a way, that you're just symbols. But as I understand it, uh, each of you girls stands for one of the qualities that make our product what it is. The complexion soap nine out of ten screen stars use. So why don't you, now one at a time, girls, tell our audience about yourselves. That tall, slender girl first now. What do you stand for? I stand for Lux Soap's mildness. When a woman has sensitive skin, that's terribly important. Next, the young lady with the blonde hair. Lux Soap's purity. That means only the finest ingredients are used in Lux soap. And you? Whiteness. Women love to use Lux soap because it's such a luxurious looking cake. So white and so smooth and well made. And you? Active lather is what I stand for. That means Lux soap cares for the complexion very gently but very thoroughly. And that's awfully important because it makes Lux soap such a wonderful beauty aid. Such a wonderful help in keeping skin smooth and soft. And you know, really lovely. Very good. And now the girl with the red hair again. I stand for the Lux Soap perfume. It's very choice and distinctive. A blend of 34 costly ingredients. When women use Lux Soap for an active lather beauty bath, it leaves a delicate clinging fragrance on their skin. Good. Now the girl next to you. I stand for long-lasting quality of Lux Soap. That means it's thrifty. A firm hard cake that gives a wonderful lather. Thank you, girls. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, you Mr. And do come again. You know, I only wish our audience could see you as well as hear you. I'm sure they'd say with me, Lux Toilet Soap is proud of you. Now, our producer, Mr. DeMille. Act two of Love Affair, starring Irene Dunn as Terry McKay and William Powell as Michael Mane. The excitement of the landing is over. Michael and Terry have been rushed away from the dock under the protection of their respective fiancés. Now, a few hours later, 
Terry stands on the balcony of her penthouse apartment, gazing dreamily at the majestic tower of the Empire State Building. Behind her, in the room, the door opens quietly. Hello, darling. Oh. Oh, hello, Ken. Well, darling, how does it feel to be back? Oh, fine. Only, Ken, I want to... Sorry I had to rush away this morning, but I've got my business all cleaned up, and right now there's not a thing on my mind except that I'm in love. Uh, kiss? Mm Mm-hmm. And I've got a surprise for you, Terry. Uh, uh, wait a minute. Uh, Kiss me again, will you? Mm Mm-hmm. Remind me to ask you later what's happened to your kisses. Maybe you're just out of practice. I hope. Oh, by the way, take a look at the paper. Your picture's on page three. Oh? Marnay wedding off. Think of it. Your picture right under the headline. They could have said, uh, beautiful Terry McKay comes between the famous Marnay and his fiancée. Or maybe they should have. Should they? Well, after all, darling, you were on the boat with him, weren't you? Mm-hmm. Did you meet him? Yes. Uh-huh. Must be a fascinating chap. Yes, he's... he's oh, a... and uh, he's not nearly as bad as people say oh, he is. darling, if there were only some way without hurting you. Uh-huh. I get it. I'm sorry. Oh, Ken. Terry, darling, how can you do such a thing? It doesn't make sense. I know. You must be losing your mind. I know, I know. Well, Terry, what are you going to do? We're giving it six months to... Well, to see if if we're both sure what we want. I'm leaving New York. I'm going to get a job somewhere singing. And, uh, well, uh, we're, we're going to meet in July. Terry, listen to me. I won't let you do this. You're too fine. I wanted to marry you. I brought the ring. That was my surprise. I should have brought it a long time ago, but... Well, it's not too late. It can't be too late. Sweetheart, look at me. Can't you see I'm in love? I know, Ken, darling. But so am I. <laughs> Philadelphia. Well, that noise is applause, isn't it? Well, maybe they're applauding your two dollar dinner. <laughs> oh, you've got the job, Miss McKay. Now, if you'll step into my office, I'd like to talk about a nice long contract. Only six months. Six months? That's not a long time. Oh, yes, it is. Well, there you are. There's a whole lot of them. What do you think? Eleven paintings in a few weeks. You've been working hard, Michael. That's right. Now I want you to work hard, Kube. I want you to sell them for me. You can go to work on this one first. Still alive. Hmm. Well, what's the matter? Don't you like it? No, but I tell you, if you signed it Michael Marnay instead of Andre, I could sell it to plenty of women. No. This is a new Marnay, whose name is Andre. I was hoping you'd like this. Mm, so was I. Well, it's been so long time since I... Uh... <laughs> Funny... Painting seemed so easy before. And probably because I didn't care then. Well, what do you expect in two or three months? Uh, you mind if I help myself to this apple? If you don't mind it being only half an apple. Oh. Uh, that was my lunch. Do you care to have dinner with me? No, 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 no. I'll, I'll take a cigarette, though. Sorry, I quit smoking. Oh. Mm-hmm. What's the painting on the easel? Oh, that's not quite finished. Ah, it's a woman. Thanks. You like her? Mm, well... I know. You wouldn't like to be seen with her. Uh. You did this without a model? Uh, women are more expensive than apples. Well, I'd finish it, though. You shouldn't have any trouble getting a model. This is the new Marnay. Well, I suppose if I can't sell my paintings, I'll have to get a job. Oh, I wouldn't give up your painting. Oh, I'm not going to give it up. It's the only thing I know. I have to make money. A lot of money. Oh, of course. Of course. But, but how? Say, look, Corby. You ever see those fellows who work up on uh, scaffolding? Huh? You know, they, they make pictures, pretty girls, automobiles, beer. Sign painting? Yes, that's it. How do you get that kind of work? Oh, I don't know. Maybe you need an agent. Huh? Maybe. I'll have to find out. Say, say, look, bud. Huh? I don't know how much of this kind of work you've done, but when you're standing on a scaffold four flights up, you stand quiet, see? You don't go dancing around like the queen of the may or you land up on the sidewalk. Oh, I'm sorry, my friend. It's just that I'm happy. How do you like my streamlined siren? She'll look down on all New York and sell beer by the gallon. Michael! Michael! 
Who's that? There's a guy down there waving at you. Kurbe! What is it? I have been looking all over for you. I have good news. You know the woman I would not be seen with? Yes. I sold her for $200. Two hundred. hot. My friend, I'm a painter. Yeah, so am I. <laughs> This is Miss Lane at the Salon Moderne. Mr. Bradley, I thought I'd call you. Miss McKay came into the shop this afternoon for some new dresses. Yes, and I was wondering if her credit was still good. I mean, we used to send the bills to you at... Oh, of course. Anything she wants. Yes, sir. What? Well, I'll try to hold her here. How long will you be? All right. Goodbye. <laughs> No, no. It's no use, Miss Lane. I think I have enough right now. Nothing else, thank you. Well, if you're sure, Miss McKay, uh, where shall I have this sent? Oh, well, I don't know at the moment. I'll have to call back and let you know. Now, let me see. That'll be $134. There. I think that's right, isn't it? You mean we're not to charge this to... To Mr. Bradley? No. No? No, no. Goodbye. Hello, Terry. Why, Ken? How are you, Terry? Where have you been hiding all these months? Why, Ken, what are you doing here? How on earth did you know I would... Oh, oh, Miss Lane. I see. What time is it, Ken? I'm late. It's uh, five minutes to five. Oh, heavens. It's good seeing you, Ken. It's good seeing you, Terry. There's so much to talk to you about. I... Yes, I I'm sorry I'm in such a hurry. But there's so much I want to say to well, you. Well, call me up sometime. Oh, no, you can't do that either when I'm going to be married. You're going to be married? Yes, Ken, and I'm late. What time did you say it was? Uh, four minutes to five. Looks like I came all the way down here just to tell you what time it was, doesn't it? Yeah. Goodbye, Ken. Goodbye. Good luck. Driver, can't you hurry? Sorry, miss. Traffic jam. I can cut across 30 seconds. Oh, no, no, ne never mind. I, I think I'll save time if I get out here. I'm in a hurry. Here you are. Hey, what's the big rush? I'm going to be married, <laughs> and I'd like you to be the first to congratulate me. Oh, sure. Congratulations. Thanks. <laughs> Goodbye. Hey, look out. Look out, miss. Huh? A woman got here. What? She just stepped out of my cab. This minute I was talking to her. Now get an ambulance. Get an ambulance. Quick, somebody. And this tower is the tallest in the world. 102 floors above the street. Now, if you ladies and gentlemen will just move around this way, you can see the whole of downtown New York. Elevator the street. Going down, sir? No. What's that? We're going down? Oh, no, no, I'm uh, waiting for... I say, what time is it? Uh, ten minutes after five. Oh, thanks. Hey, hey, listen. Hey, there must have been an accident somewhere. Yes. And up that way is the George Washington Bridge. It's not very clear tonight, but if you look carefully, you can see the red light which marks the top of the steel tower. Now, on a clear night, you can see the automobile lights. Going down? No, not yet. It's 8 o'clock, sir. Well, I, I'm not going down yet. Oh, yes, sir. Huh, kind of looks like a storm coming up, doesn't it? Phew, boy. Some rain, huh? Uh, it's been going steady for three hours. Well, uh... Oh, uh, wait a minute. Are oh, you going down now? Uh, yes. Yes, I'm going down. Well, Doctor, how's she doing? Will she be all right, Doctor? Well, her x-rays aren't too encouraging. It's hard to say if she'll ever walk again. We can tell better in a few months. Oh, um... Are you the fellow she was yelling about under the anesthetic? 
No, no, that's another chap. She was on her way to marry him. Mm-hmm. Well, have you uh, notified him? No, she doesn't want that. Because until she knows what you say you won't know for a while, she'd rather he didn't know. I see. Now, that's being sensible. A nice girl. I think so. May I go in? Of course. Hello, Ken. Hello, Terry. Ken, this is Father Haney. I know. We've met. He was the one who sent for me, child. We weren't very sure we were going to have you with us. Fooled you, didn't I, Father? I guess I had this coming to me, but... If the punishment fits the crime, I must have been a very bad girl. Oh, Ken is... Ken's the man I told you. Yes, I know. He explained. Oh, he did, huh? Fine thing. Tattletale. Men like to talk, don't they, Father? You know, I was on my way to be married this afternoon. I was going to meet him. This other fellow. Do you suppose he'll wait a very long time? In just a moment, we continue with Love Affair, starring William Powell and Irene Dunn. Meantime... Goodness, something's gone wrong over at the Browns' apartment. Oh, Bobby, why did you pull on the tablecloth? You've broken two of our beautiful wedding present dishes. Oh, no, no, dear. Don't cry. Mother knows it wasn't your fault, really. Oh, come on now, quick, and get your nice bath. You know, with all the waves and the nice white foam. Ah, oh, there. That's a good boy. And you can bring your sailboat, too. Won't that be nice? There. Isn't it fun? Don't you love your nice bath? And tomorrow night you can have another. Yes, with nice foamy soap waves and everything. Now let's hurry and get dry before Daddy gets here. Because you know Mummy has to have her bath too. That's a good boy, Bobby dear. Come on. Well, a nice warm Lux toilet soap bath has saved the day for little Bobby. And now it's going to save the day for his tired mother too. With Bobby safely in his crib, she'll rest back in her nice warm bath for a while and cover herself lazily with the rich, creamy lather that makes Lux Toilet Soap bathing such a joy. She knows this nice, rich lather is active lather that will gently carry away every trace of dust and dirt, leave her skin really fresh. After a few moments, she'll step out completely refreshed, a delicate, clinging fragrance on her skin. And later on, When she greets that young husband of hers in a fresh, becoming frock, he's sure to say nice things. What an adorable wife I've got. Fresh as a daisy. Sweet as a... as a... Oh, oh, gee, darling. You are sweet. You will find a daily active lather bath with Lux Toilet Soap a wonderful way to protect daintiness. To make sure of skin that's sweet. Try it. We pause now for station identification. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. The curtain rises on Act Three of Love Affair. Three months, Terry lay in the hospital, unable to move. Then at last they told her she might go out, as far as the hospital gate. But in her loneliness, Terry has found company. Children from the Lincoln Heights orphanage next door, who climb over the fence each day to sit in an adoring circle around her wheelchair. Oh, Miss Terry, sing for us. Sing for us. Uh, again? Uh-huh. Sing that song you wrote, Miss Terry, the one about the wishing. We've been practicing it, Miss Terry. We've got a trail. No. Uh-huh. Well, all right. I'll sing it, and then you join in. Oh, that's yeah. it. Oh, that's 
Keep quiet, everybody. Okay, Miss Terry. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Wishing we'll make it so. Just keep on wishing, and care will go. Dreamers tell us dreams come true. It's no mistake, and wishes are the dreams we dream when we're awake. The curtain of night will part if you are. Within your heart. So if you wish long enough, wish strong enough, you will come to know. Wishing will make it so. Now let's hear the trio. Come on, here we go. Wishing will make it so. Just keep on wishing and care will go. Dreamers tell us dreams come true. It's no mistake and wishing are the dreams we dream when we're awake the curtain of night will part if you are certain within your heart la, 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 la. so if you wish long enough wish strong enough How do you do? I'm the, the superintendent of the orphanage. Y yes, I know. How long has this been going on? Well, just a few days. I, I hope you're not angry. Oh, no, no. When you have as many youngsters on your hands as I have, lady, you have a problem. Oh, I don't know. I like them. I like kids. I do, too. But they don't like me. They, they call me Pickle Puss. Oh, oh dear. I can see they like you, and music, too. And if it has so much influence, if you can do so much in a few days, I'm thinking... I'm wondering if you're thinking the same thing I am. I'll be up and around pretty soon, and music has charms, and I like children, and children like me, and I'll be needing a job badly. It would only be an experiment, you understand. We couldn't pay a high wage. Oh, I wouldn't care anything about that. Uh, uh, just so you paid me enough so that I don't go around calling you pickle puss. <laughs> <laughs> thought I'd pay your Christmas visit. Good, good. But uh, where have you been, Michael? I, 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 I've been trying for, for six months to get in touch with you. Oh, Madeira, mostly. You received my paintings? You received your paintings. Come here. <laughs> Look at the gallery. I have given you a one-man show. Well. And, 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 and have they been selling? Wonderful. Oh, you, you haven't wasted your time, Michael. <laughs> You should have seen the fifty I threw over the cliff. <laughs> uh, I can I can read the state of your mind when you painted these. Now look, for instance, you were very sorry for yourself when you painted this one. Yeah, that's right. That was painted in August. Mm -hmm. And uh, in this one, you were angry. You um, you were just getting over your uh, your broken heart. 
Broken heart? <laughs> That's not for me. <laughs> of course not. Oh, but here, this one. This one of the girl in the lace shawl. In this, Michael, you, for the first time, really became a painter. I'm not exactly ashamed of that one myself. I had a great deal to say. I tried to paint it instead. <laughs> Good. Oh, let me tell you something. A, uh, a girl came in here the other day and saw this, and she, uh, well, uh, she told me <laughs> that... Uh, had the oh, excuse me. Hello? Yes, madame? Michael, it's for you. Huh? Your, uh, your former fiancé, Miss uh, Lois Clark. Mi well, how does she know that... Hello. Michael, this is Lois. Well, how are you, Lois? I, uh, I called your hotel. They said you could be reached at this number. Oh, Michael. Michael, I've just got to see you. Well, uh... I know you must be busy, but can you make the theater tonight? Well, I, I don't know. I, uh... Well, call me later, darling, and let me know. Do try to make it. And whatever you do, don't plan anything for after the show. Hmm? Well, all right. Well, Lois, where shall we go from here? Well, suppose you plan where we'll go, Michael. After all, this is your evening, darling. <laughs> Wait, I don't know where to go anymore. I just got back, you know. If you... What is it, Michael? Who's that girl you're staring at? That one sitting over on the aisle. Hello, Michael. Oh, hello, Terry. Uh, what are you saying, Lois? I was saying you're never at a loss to do just the right thing. Terry. Oh, Ken. Terry, why don't you tell him? I'll go and get him. No, no, Ken. It's tough. The first time you're able to get out and have a good time, you have to meet him. And all I could say was, hello. Well, the show's over. The boy gets the girl. Shall we go? Certainly. Uh, Usher. Usher, will you bring the wheelchair, please? You know, Terry, it seems awful to take you home when everybody's going out celebrating Christmas Eve. I'm going to ask you again. Why don't you let me help you? All right, I'll tell you again. If you paid for my getting well, he wouldn't like it. And if he didn't like it, I wouldn't like it. And if you did get me well and I went to him, you wouldn't like it. Then he certainly ought to know. No, no, because if he found out, he'd want to do something about it. If he had the money, and I know he hasn't. And then if I didn't get well... That would be awful. No, no, uh, unless I can walk to him, and when I say walk, I mean run. He'll never know. I've got my job, and I'm on a budget, and if things come out all right, and if I'm a good little girl, maybe I'll get what I want next Christmas. Wait, wait. The doctor says I can't go, kid. Oh, look, doctor, I could be back in a couple of hours. This is a Christmas benefit, their first public appearance. This is my team. But, Miss McKay, She's I... She's a I... coach, Doc. Sure she is, Doc. Now, look, children, if it weren't good for her, you wouldn't want her to go, now would you? No. Well, I've given orders to Miss McKay not to move from this couch. I'm sorry, kids, but you can get along without me. You'll have to try anyway. Miss McKay, there's someone here to see you. A uh, gentleman. Oh, oh, oh. All right. Kids, uh, you better run now. Good luck. Goodbye. 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 Merry Christmas. All right, you can send him in now. Come in, please. Hello. Michael. Oh, well, I thought it was... May I put this package over here? Well, yes, of course. How are you, Terry? Oh, it's good to see you. It's good to see you, too. Why, are you lying down, feeling all right? Oh, yes, yes, I I'm just resting. Good. It's been a long time. Yeah, that's right. It's good to see you. Yes, you said that. I bet you were wondering how I got here. Mm-hmm. Well, I was looking in the telephone book for a man named McBride, and I saw the name Terry McKay. So I said to myself, could that be Terry McKay, my old friend? Mm -hmm. And it was. Yes. And then I said to myself, 
I haven't been very nice to Miss McKay. After all, I had an appointment with her one day, and I didn't keep it. You didn't keep... Oh. And that's not a very nice way to treat an old friend, is it? So I said to myself, I must apologize. So, here I am. That's sweet of you. Yes, I thought so. I've often wondered about you and how you were. Really? I've often wondered about you, too. Well, then you you didn't get angry because I wasn't there. <clears throat> well, you must have been at first. Oh, yes, at first I was furious. I I said, uh, he can't do this to me. Who does he think he is? Now, how long did you wait? I mean, uh, uh, did you wait long? Well, let me see. I waited till about... Uh, midnight. Oh. And then what did you do? Well, then I really got mad. You can just imagine standing up there. Yes, in a thunderstorm. Yes. And then what did you say to yourself? Well, then I said, um, why don't you go home and get tight? Uh, uh, but you didn't do that. Didn't I? No. Well, uh, maybe you took a little one every hour for about a month. <laughs> Can you blame me? Oh, I should say not. I, the least I could have done was send you a note. Oh, well, maybe by the time you thought of it, you didn't know where to reach me. But you swore that if you ever saw me again, you'd uh, ask, uh, didn't you? No. No, I remember we said that uh, if we could make it, we'd be there. And uh, if one of us didn't show up, there must have been a darn good reason. Like what? So there'll be no more questions asked, I hope. Cigarette? Oh, thank you, Terry. Thank you, Michael. You know, uh, I walked all the way here ten blocks to wring your beautiful neck. And instead, I promised not even to ask you why you weren't there. You knew that was why I came. Mm Mm-hmm. Yes. Well, no... uh, Wedding ring, I see. No. Oh, I thought of the, uh... Theater last night? Hmm. No, no, he was... No. Well, I, I didn't mean to offend you. How's everything with you, Michael? Oh, you can ask questions. <laughs> I guess so. Well, I thought everything was fine till I saw you. And then I knew there must be something between us. Even if it's only the ocean. So I bought myself a ticket. Oh, you're sailing? Tonight. You're, uh... You're happy, aren't you? Yes. And you? Well, I don't know. I'm worried about the future. What will people think of me? They'll say, uh... There goes Andre, the mad painter. There's something the matter with him. He doesn't like women. You mean he won't even speak to them? Oh, yes, yes. He sails the seven seas. And to every woman he meets, he says, uh... Where will you be in six months? And they're there? (laughs) Everywhere. Tall buildings, pyramids, everywhere. Waiting, waiting, waiting. And where is he? Waiting. You want to change the subject? Yes. Merry Christmas, Michael. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Six months ago, who'd have thought we'd be spending Christmas together? Oh, I, I almost forgot. I brought you a present. Oh, I, I'm sorry. I haven't one for you. I didn't know I'd be seeing you. Well, it isn't really a Christmas present. It's uh, a shawl. A shawl? Her shawl. That's why my letters came back. Yes, she died five months ago. I would have sent it to you, except I didn't know the address until today. It's beautiful. Yeah, put it on. She wanted you to have it. Well, goodbye, Terry. Goodbye, Michael. You know, the way you look now, I painted you like that the shawl. <laughs> Wish you'd seen it. Kube said it was my best. I didn't think I'd ever part with it, but there's no reason for my keeping it anymore. A girl came into Kube's shop about a week ago. He told me about her. She saw in the painting what I hoped you'd see. So I told Kube to send it to her, because he said she was poor, and not only that, she was... Oh, well... Anyway, I said, I said, send it to her. It's the Christmas season, and if she can't afford, uh, well, you know me, big-hearted Michael. Yes. What's behind this screen? Oh, no, no, don't, don't, don't. It's, it's nothing, really, it's nothing. My picture. My lady with the shawl. Michael. You know, there's one thing more Kobe told me about the girl. You know the girl he gave my picture to? She'd been hurt in an accident. Oh, please, please. 
Don't say any more. Oh, Terry, why didn't you tell me? If anything had to happen to either of us, why did it have to be you? Darling, don't look at me like that. It was nobody's fault but my own. I was looking up at the 102nd floor. You see, it was the nearest thing to heaven because you were there. Oh, Terry. Terry, I'm not going. I'm never going. You'll be well again. Oh, darling, of course I will. After all, if you can paint, I can walk. A happy ending to Love Affair brings us another happy moment. The return of Irene Dunn and William Powell for well-deserved curtain calls. Thank you, Cecil. It's always a pleasure to come back to the Lux Radio Theater. The place hasn't changed a bit, has it, Bill? Well, I think Cecil has installed a new gum machine. I put a nickel in today and actually got some gum out of it. Oh. <laughs> That's purely an accident, Bill. I'll have it fixed in the morning. <laughs> However, aside from your contributions to the gum machine, we really have missed you both. Oh, that's nice to know, Mr. DeMille. But out of sight is never out of mind for the Lux Radio Theater, as long as there's Lux Soap. I use it myself all the time, and I can sincerely recommend it to any woman as a gentle and thorough complexion care. Words of wisdom, Irene, from a lovely example. Bill, what's this I've heard about you writing a detective story? <laughs> Exaggeration, I'm afraid, Cecil. So far, no producer thinks it's a story. Well, <laughs> I've often wondered how it's done, Bill. Do you start out with the crime or the solution when you make up your plot? I started with the problem, Irene, but unfortunately, on my first attempt, I invented a perfect crime. I found it was impossible to solve. <laughs> Shades of the thin man. You're disillusioning millions, Bill. <laughs> well, I started out again with the answer and worked backwards. If you ever write a detective story, Cecil, I advise that. Thanks. I'll let you know. At the moment, there's next week's play to think about. What is that, Mr. DeMille? Well, next Monday night, we're going to have two of the nation's favorite radio stars in the Lux Radio Theater, Fibber McGee and Molly. And the play is Mama Loves Papa. It was a great hit on the screen, the story of a happily married suburban couple, with Fibber McGee as the average citizen who accidentally gets into politics, and Molly as his wife. I promise you that Fibber's adventures in politics are just what you might expect. The prospect for next week looks very brilliant, Cecil. Good night. Good night. Good night. We'll hang out our, our lucky star to bring you both back soon. Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Toilet Soap, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theatre presents Fibber McGee and Molly in Mama Loves Papa. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Hollywood. Heard in tonight's play were Gail Gordon as Kenneth, B. Benaderet as Grandmother, Lou Merrill as Courbet, Frank McGlynn as Superintendent, Linda Douglas as Lois, Warren Ash as a Doctor, Sarah Selby as Miss Lane, Philip Steed as a Painter, James Eagles as Elevator Boy, Tony Martelli as a Photographer, Ralph Sedan as a Guide, Edward Marr as Taxi Driver, Griff Barnett as a Priest, the Bryan Sisters as the Trio, and Barbara Jean Wong Bobby Larson, and Joe Panario as children. Irene Dunn will soon be seen in the RKO picture, My Favorite Wife, which was produced by Leo McCary and directed by Garson Kanan. William Powell will shortly begin work in the MGM production, I'm in Love Again. Our music was directed by Louis Silvers, and your announcer has been Melville Ruick. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.